Hello everyone and welcome back to my all-country tour in Microsoft Flight Sim conducted during the Olympics during Twitch live streams. The live streams may or may not still be up. I think most of them should still be available if you really wanted to see the entire flights, but this is the edited version of all the flights, all flights being conducted in the F-111. And I'm flying this flight, this is the 12th flight out from Helsinki through Finland, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Iceland, Scotland, well, the United Kingdom, Ireland, uh, Netherlands, we're touching upon Germany, uh, Luxembourg, Belgium, and then landing in Paris in France. Uh, I'm not required to go through each country like lengthwise or anything. We just have to fly over some part of every country in the world during the flights. And all the flights were conducted during the Olympics. So they're all completed and it's 25 flights altogether. And this is the 12th one. This video will have flights 12 through 15, and so that will get us all the way down to Lagos. I did have Twitch chat on the side, you might have seen some stuff on the left hand side where people were talking, and that was because I was going to upload the entire videos to YouTube, uh, but that turned out to be not very useful, people weren't watching the huge long flights all the way through, and also uh, the bandwidth usage was really high for uploading the entire flights. So, I hope you'll enjoy this edited version here as I fly over Helsinki. I didn't fly over it uh, or didn't take a close look at it on the way in. Similarly, at the end of Flight 12, I won't be flying directly over Paris, but we'll do that at the start of Flight 13. The F-111's livery was custom for this purpose. You'll notice the Olympic logo on the side as well. One of the downsides to flying the F-111 is we're going to be flying mainly high up and fast. Uh, of course, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to do it. If somebody would like to fund an uh, all-country tour at slower speeds, that'd be great. I, I would be glad to do it. But uh, feasibility is low unless we're going to be going at the speeds that this plane is capable of and with the range that this one has. So other than this, it would be like the Concorde, which would have the range and speeds. Um, I would love the SR-71 if we could get it, but we, we don't have the SR-71 for flight sim right now. So, yeah. Uh, but the SS-71 is much less maneuverable than this. This one already has like an 80 nautical mile turning radius for U-turn. So as we pass over Stockholm, there was a lot of clouds there. But yeah, the SS-71 takes maybe like 200 miles or something like that. So Sweden, I uh, cut across Sweden like this, heading to Oslo in Norway. So these uploads to YouTube are just for verification, I don't want to lose the record of these flights entirely, and of course Twitch live streams are gonna go away eventually. Uh, they hang out for like two months and then they're deleted. So yeah, here, my proof. Uh, and people were watching, you can see the chat there, there was uh, witnesses to the whole ordeal. It was pleasurable enough, but you know, it, it was still a long, long thing and had to be done on time given the length of the Olympics. So passing by Oslo and turning towards Denmark, we're not really going to get to Copenhagen, we're just going to fly over northern Denmark here. And it was so cloudy here that I decided to turn off real world weather. I usually like to fly with live weather, but uh, that was going too far and we need to see the countries that we're flying over somewhat at least. So there's Denmark for you, and yes, we certainly got Denmark. We're not going to fly over Greenland, Greenland's part of Denmark. So it's covered by the fact that we're flying over Denmark here. So after this, I do have to go to Iceland though. And so here as we fly over the west coast of Denmark, I head towards Iceland over the North Sea, uh, past the Hebrides. I assume those are the Hebrides, I forget. Uh, there, there are various other islands, but I think that's the Hebrides. And then Iceland. Iceland has a very nice, very landscape. I have the Iceland mesh, the free Iceland mesh from Orbix as well. And then they've had various uh, Scandinavian updates as well. I don't know what exactly that's done for Iceland. But here we are cruising at Mach 2.1 and making a turn over Iceland to head all the way back to Scotland. And yeah, Iceland mostly looks good, mostly looks good, but there are some rough patches. Like here, with all the updates, I don't understand why they couldn't just like sort of smudge this, these little blocks out. I mean, it's just flat white. Can we just get rid of those? I mean, just touch it up a little bit. It, 
it shouldn't be that hard. You could basically do it in Photoshop. <laughs> I mean, anyway. So yeah, there's always those little things because they don't like touching up the photo scenery, unfortunately. But here we have Loch Ness in Scotland. That is one thing I wanted to fly over. Uh, a great big swimming pool for an Olympic sized sea monster. And here I'm changing the heading to turn towards Ireland. I am using the iPod to do the turns and keep our height. And mainly that's because if I try to do it, we'll lose a lot of speed and efficiency. Uh, I could turn faster than this, for instance, but then we would be losing speed when I do. So the all pilot turns very nicely uh, in a way that keeps our velocity and that gets us the maximum range. So here flying over Dublin, it uh, struggled to sort of load Dublin properly as I flew along. Uh, I am going very fast and Europe in general, it doesn't like loading Europe at Mach 2. So it just gets worse and worse through every flight. But yeah, that was Dublin as far as we could see it from the site and then on back to Britain and there's Wales beckoning us. I did not fly over the Isle of Man specifically. That was, uh, I don't think necessary, but uh, here's Heathrow there. You can see Heathrow from up here very clearly and London over there, but we're not gonna get any particular detail on London. I've flown by London many, many times before at lower altitudes anyway, so it's all right. Someday flying a Spitfire around the world, not through every country, but around the world would be nice. I do have the Flying Iron Spitfire, and I've flown that through London many times. Anyway, departing Britain and then headed towards Amsterdam. Here we are approaching the, the shores of the Netherlands and Amsterdam in front of us. Now, originally I plotted this a little bit differently, but the turning radius changed how this was all plotted. So, instead of like going direct to Belgium or something like that, I decided to turn into Germany and head through Germany first, and then come around into Luxembourg and then Belgium. So we're make making a big loop around here. So this is Germany. During the flight, I sort of read out the medal recipients that had occurred up to that point for each country and mentioned how many participants they had in the Olympics and all that business. I had initially been hoping for a lot more Olympic talk during the flights, but that didn't happen. We didn't have as many people watching, alas. This wasn't really a popular premise, apparently. But anyway, Luxembourg. We're headed in there. And then get a good look at the city, and then I had to turn towards Belgium anyway. Luxembourg is not the smallest country we're going to be flying through during this video, not even close. Uh, there's Brussels in Belgium. I did manage to fly over that. Nice looking city. No, uh, the next flight is going to be full of really tiny places, so I'll look forward to that. Here I am landing at Charles de Gaulle. Again, we're going to start the next flight with the flyover of Paris. But I just decided to fly into Charles de Gaulle here. That completed a flight of 3,351 nautical miles as plotted. With the turns, it's actually much more than that. And the flight time was 3 hours and 27 minutes. So touching down here. After such a flight, that's as good as that's going to get. Unfortunately, the ATC decided to give me a full tour of Charles de Gaulle Airport <laughs> as I taxied around. The taxi path was everywhere. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's any part of the airport I didn't taxi through, but we, there's Terminal 1 apparently. Uh, and this roadway underneath with the trucks uh, sort of manifesting midair like that. And on through this part. So, I, I'm sure I was tired, and this wasn't helping, but it's alright, that's alright, we got a nice tour, and after all, Paris was the host city and everything. And they didn't even give me a nice green box to park in, you know, the one that starts out blue and then turns green. But anyway, that was done, and this is the next flight. This is down to Casablanca in Morocco, and... 
We are going to be flying through Italy there and Spain and Portugal, but also a whole bunch of smaller countries. The, uh, Switzerland's there, but that's not a small country. There's Liechtenstein, San Marino, Vatican City, and Andorra are, are the ones. And at Mach 2, it's really hard to actually fly over them, especially Vatican City. Now, Vatican City doesn't have an Olympic team, but I, it's a country, so it counts. Uh, the others do, by the way, Andorra, uh, Liechtenstein, and uh, San Marino do have Olympic teams. So, here's the flyover of France, and uh, I'll make it an extended sort of thing here. The weather was a bit gloomy. I guess that's how it was during the Olympics, too. A little bit rainy on that day. This was August 3rd, by the way. Now this flight was shorter than the previous one, 2,487 nautical miles, and it would eventually take 2 hours and 12 minutes. I'll give the full account of the distance and how long it took at the end, but yeah, as a result I'm not carrying the external tanks, and ultimately I, I don't think I carry the external tanks ever again, because I figure they aren't necessary. That We can put tanks in the cargo bay, in, in the internal bay. And that seemed to be enough for all the flights. Well, there's the Arc de Triomphe, and then flying by the Eiffel Tower, of course. During the Olympics, they placed some of the events right near the Eiffel Tower. They tried to make everything as scenic as possible. Okay, and then after that flyover, I ascended through the cloud layer. The music really... Uh, emphasizing things in a wonderful way. Uh, it was just my usual streaming playlist from OC Remix and the VLC media player was playing them randomly but so I happened to get a good one on that part. And up I went. But I couldn't break through the clouds when the music suggested that I should. <laughs> but that was a nice view. It's nice to have clouds every now and again of course. But not if they block the view. So I think I did lessen them somewhat eventually. So head down to Switzerland at this point. Incidentally the triangle on the tail is the Raise Aerospace logo. The number inside is the one that I normally use for my own planes if I'm making delivery. 412 is in reference to Yuri Gagarin's launch uh, into orbit, the first orbital crewed space flight, and also the first space shuttle flight. Both occurred on April 12th, though of course they were 20 years apart. Uh, so here's Switzerland. I uh, flew over uh, Lake Geneva and then on to Liechtenstein. There it is. So I had to make sure to fly over that. That wasn't too bad. It's not quite as small as San Marino and Vatican City and Monaco. There's Monaco. I forgot about Monaco, right? And Andorra. Andorra is about Liechtenstein, Liechtenstein level, but the other ones, San Marino, Vatican City and Monaco are smaller and a little bit hard to hit at these speeds. As you can see, I am going at Mach 2 and changing the heading very particularly. So, now turning over the Alps in Austria here in order to go over into Italy. And so, approaching the Italian Alps and then right next to Venice. I was originally intending on flying directly over Venice, but there's really not much of a point. We're not going to see Venice very well, but there's Venice over there. You can sort of see the island if you recognize it. And the Venice Lagoon. And then San Marino. Oh, well, this map San Marino is not that small. But you can tell by the speed at which my little cursor is heading over it on the Skyforce Sim map in the bottom right that, yeah. It's, uh, we cover it in a matter of less than a minute. Seconds, really. So there you go, San Marino, you got your flyover. Try my best here. So we head to Rome, and besides enjoying flying over Rome anyway, uh, of course it's for Vatican City, and actually I didn't get to enjoy it much, because in order to aim for Vatican City, and make sure I flew over it. I basically had to be inside the cockpit and tuning the heading very precisely. And you can sort of see the little circle and the little blue icon indicating Vatican City there and the fact that I flew over it basically in less than a second. I feel like that maybe one second we were over Vatican City. Uh, but yeah, it's that small. So that's the smallest one. 
that's the smallest one we have to deal with but I did it uh, <laughs> managed to do that even when this thing has a turning radius of 80 nautical miles again a u-turn um, so or is it 40 I don't know how to define the turning radius actually uh, maybe it's a turning diameter of 80 mile, nautical miles and radius of 40 but that does mean that I made a really big turn over here over the Mediterranean in order to get to Monaco and so there's Monaco down there so we get to fly over France a little bit more after that because we're headed over this bit here and uh, with all those lines on the map I couldn't really tell where the gray line border of Monaco was but we could certainly see Monaco down there so I've flown over it I've flown by it enough to know that well that's over enough for me uh, we definitely saw Monaco there so now turning towards Andorra which is nestled between France and Spain in the midst of the Pyrenees. Right there. So here we are, Andorra. Sort of right there in the middle. Don't know much about it. But it has been covered in this all country tour. We leave no country unflown over, I guess. Well, there are some debatable ones, but we'll say I tried my best, okay? Well, I'll give you the full account of all the ones I did fly over, and uh, if you think I messed up somewhere, well, shucks. Anyway, there's Madrid. I don't know how many other people have ever flown over every country on the planet in any flight simulator. Uh, I. I don't know how exclusive a club this is. Maybe other people have done it. Maybe it's a very common thing for all I know. But I'm the only one I know of, for sure. So anyway, so flew over Madrid, uh, flew by Lisbon because I had to make the turn here. But there's Lisbon there. And Lisbon behind us. So Portugal checked. And all we have left for this 13th flight is Morocco with the landing at Casablanca. I tried to get a look at Gibraltar, uh, Gibraltar's uh, possession of the United Kingdom, so I didn't have to fly over it directly, uh, but there was a cloud over it, just one big splotch of a cloud directly over it. And uh, to please my Twitch audience, I decided to use the fuel dump with afterburner on feature of the F-111. Uh, this is not environmentally friendly, but this is a game. Uh, I would not do this in real life, but uh, well, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't want to dump the fuel like that in real life. But there's the fuel dump switch, and so you can have flames coming out the back, and so it's nice and flight sim. So here we are approaching Casablanca. I was, I think, a little bit on the heavy side because of the shortness of the flight, under 2,500 nautical miles. So that's one reason I decided to do the fuel dump. Uh, not that I would have had problem landing, I don't think. But uh, anyway, there is Casablanca, a pleasant city. Though the airport was further inland than I originally expected. And here we go, touchdown. So both the previous flight and this flight, flights 12 and 13, were on August 3rd, and the next two flights are on August 4th. And the next flight will take me over to Timbuktu in Mali. When I report the flight times, they'll be from liftoff to touchdown, not including all this taxiing. So liftoff to touchdown for this flight from Paris to Casablanca was 2 hours and 12 minutes. And I used the uh, time on the sky for sim thing, generally. The flight distances are plot distances on the world map here, whatever it says. And But with the turns, like I said, it can be much longer than that. And as you can see, the flight path from Casablanca to... Uh, Algeria, Tunisia, Malta, we have to get Malta, I didn't forget Malta, uh, to Libya, Chad, uh, Niger, and then Mali. So that's why it's making that path there. And then uh, on the 15th flight, this is the 14th flight, then the 15th flight, I'll go along the western coast of Africa, along all those little countries, uh, over to Nigeria. So, lifting off from Casablanca. Unexpectedly on this flight, the highlight was actually in Libya, which I was not expecting because it's the Sahara Desert, mostly. So, yeah. But here is Morocco for you. Out from the airport. 
looking fairly decent. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of Africa is not well covered by the aerial photography. And up we go with the graceful wings of the F-111 extended at the moment. And then swept back once we get up to speed. So, the eastern portion of Morocco, and then on into the western portion of Algeria. Fairly rugged here, it's not like the flat Sahara sort of view, but as you go further along it's getting more like that. The city of Algiers is to our left over there, but very much in the distance and not distinct. And then Tunisia is entering Tunisia, and you can see Tunis there, old Carthage. And then the coast of Tunisia as I head over to Malta. Malta does compete in the Olympics separately and is a country, of course. Very clear. I don't think, yeah, I don't think I turned off the clouds or anything. It was just clear this day. And there's Malta. They have a lot of points of interest in Malta, and I think they have as many points of interest in Malta as they do in India, or it's pretty close. And they keep telling about the world updates. While they don't have aerial photography of everywhere or photogrammetry of everywhere, that's fine. Just add some more points of interest <laughs> to everywhere else, maybe. Uh, I wouldn't mind that. You know, other places do have monuments, and you don't have to get permission for flyovers in order to add those. Here's Libya. It has no points of interest, of course, and... Well, I don't blame them for that. I can't think of any, so... <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe Libyans can enlighten me, but I'm not sure. But actually, that's part of the reason why I want the points of interest included as much as possible, because it gives us things to discover that I didn't know about, right? That, that's the whole point. It's not because I already know about the point of interest that I would like to fly uh, fly close to it. It's because I don't know about the point of interest and I want to discover it. That's the whole point. So, anyway, Libya had a varied landscape, but very, very Sahara landscape, as you can see. But there was one interesting feature in particular that caught my eye as we passed that sort of dark patch over there. I, I don't exactly know how that happens in Desert Sider, but I've seen that before. But it's this gash in the landscape in front of us there that I didn't quite understand at all. Now, I don't know geology, uh, obviously, and uh, you know all these dark patches in the desert, I don't know how it all happens. But that gash I have never seen. I've flown over lots of the world, right, in flight sim. Well, it's not in real life. But in real life, I've flown over decent amounts too. But uh, that gash, I don't understand it at all. I've never seen anything like it. And it's just so distinct. It's on Google Maps too, but there's no name for it. And no indication of it, nothing I could look up. So if anybody knows what the heck that is... I'm really hoping you'll tell me that it's actually a spaceship crash there. And just sort of gouged out that part. But I know alien spaceship is probably not going to be the answer, but gosh... Uh, I hope at least it's a decent meteorite. I don't know what the heck. Normally they don't gouge out something like that, but how else does that form? And why is its edge serrated like that? That's not a smooth edge at all. So yeah, that has me wondering. And so that was the highlight of this flight. Though there is a competitor coming up in Mali, but uh, we are flying over Chad now. I'm only flying over the north west corner of Chad, just this little bit and turning over it. So sorry, Chad, I'm not going through all of you. But uh, we need to turn towards Niger at this point. But there's Chad, and uh, fairly detailed. There are a lot of places that I'll fly over that are not nearly as detailed as this. Apparently, uh, they've got good captures of the Sahara Desert. So it might actually be a decent thing to fly through the Sahara at lower altitudes. One of the reasons why I'm doing this flight is to figure out where it would be interesting to fly at lower altitudes uh, and where it's really not worth it because the scenery isn't very good. Um, so actually the Sahara Desert is not too bad here as I'm pushing the speeder. I try to normally keep it underneath the barber pole, the, the speed limit, but it's pushing it there as we are over Niger. Niger had all these streaky things which are apparently created by the wind. Uh, very powerful wind around here, pushing stuff around and shaping the landscape. But yeah, so that was interesting. The desert is very much smoother in parts, like this area here in western Niger, but 
sometimes then suddenly you encounter another streaky part, so I don't know. Uh, the wind patterns must be... Uh, there's some streakiness there, but yeah. How it all works out is fascinating. And this is Mali. So in Mali, we do have one very significant feature to appreciate, and that is the Niger River, uh, which you see there. Now, here it's not looking like anything special, but really, generally, rivers through deserts are pretty special. But as we go along, it very much gets more detail, and they've done a good job here. And so we see the streaks in the landscape here, and also the very detailed Niger River, which is looking very nice. So, yeah, altogether this is a good area to fly around, at least from this side. I'll have to, at some point, get a little bit closer to take a look and see how it holds up at lower altitudes. But I do descend, I have to land at Timbuktu. The meanderings of the Niger River are very colorful, and actually uh, are even more impressive as we take off from Timbuktu and head to Lagos in the next flight. Here's the landing at Timbuktu. And touchdown. All right. It's a fairly long runway, uh, but there's not much by way of facilities around here, and it's clearly not very highly detailed. And well, that's that's the parking. And Pekka was along with me for this particular flight. You might have seen him a little bit earlier, also in the F-111. And I got to park over here. And he got the more convenient spot. No, uh, well, not the more convenient spot to get out of, that's for sure. I didn't capture the world map view for this next flight, Flight 15, uh, but it is from Timbuktu to Lagos, flying through Western Africa. And 3,382 nautical miles. The previous flight was 3,405 nautical miles and took 2 hours and 55 minutes. This one, just a little bit shorter in distance, but 3 hours and 1 minute as we take off and there you see all the meanderings of the Niger River look at that crazy river in the middle of the desert here lots of stuff going on as it tries to find its way down and actually flows out through Lagos uh, so uh, uh, flows through uh, Mali through Niger and down into Nigeria so yeah very complicated river and all these meanderings are it struggling to find its way to the sea, <laughs> uh, to the Atlantic Ocean. And here's Burkina Faso, and there, there were different ways I could have approached Burkina Faso. We could have gone up from the south through the Ivory Coast, but I decided to go to Burkina Faso here, and then make the turn back into Mali and then over to Mauritania. So we're covering Burkina Faso now. I don't know much about Burkina Faso. It's sort of an interesting, in an interesting place when you think about where Mali is, where the Niger River is, Burkina Faso being there. Yeah. But here's Mauritania. Mauritania featured in an episode of Grand Tour on Amazon, uh, and that's with Clarkson Hammond and James May of Top Gear fame, uh, and they were doing ve vehicular hijinks in Mauritania. Uh, so, you can get a closer look at the country like that, I suppose. Though, don't take their word for anything, <laughs> I guess. Uh, Nuakchot, uh, that city there, the capital, featured in it, I believe. So, yep, that's the west coast of Mauritania there. And here is Cape Verde, or Capo Verde. Uh, these islands, which I had to go all the way out to, because yes, they are an independent country and compete in the Olympics separately as well. Uh, so, uh, the Azores are a possession of Portugal. I did not have to fly over those, thankfully. But, Capo Verde, you are a country. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I do fly over the islands and make the big turn back to Senegal. I had more island nations that I had to make sure to fly over off the coast of uh, Eastern Africa. But, of course, the main deal with islands is the Pacific Islands and all of those keeping track of all those making sure I get all of those and yeah so Senegal passed through and then there's the Gambia which is basically a country centered around the Gambian River uh, or Gambia River and then after you pass the river you're back in Senegal again and this river here is part of Senegal and that was the river back there that was the Gambia 
and then on into Guinea-Bissau. And the capital of Guinea-Bissau is Bissau. So, now I know that. I don't know too much else about Guinea-Bissau. The terrain doesn't look very detailed. Uh, the Sahara Desert looked more detailed than this, frankly, but uh, it's not the worst I've ever seen either. Uh, actually, we'll see worse coming along. Uh, so, yeah, that's Guinea-Bissau for you, and then on into Guinea, which is Guinea without the Bissau, I guess. Not a whole lot of distinguishing features in this area, but at least it wasn't glitched out terrain or obviously messed up terrain like that one patch we saw in Iceland or something like that. So there's that at least. Next up was Sierra Leone and Freetown over there, but unfortunately we didn't get a very good look at Freetown. I regret not turning more decisively towards the coast. I wanted to stay along the coast, but I guess I got a little bit lazy here. I do try to take a look at it over there, but alas. Anyway, on through Sierra Leone and towards Liberia. And there's Liberia. Uh, not quite as much going on on the train here. I, I'm sure it's accurate, but... Well, okay, I'm not sure it's accurate, but... Uh, I think it's accurate, but... Yeah, it's not super detailed. And then this is Abidjan in Côte d'Ivoire, or the Ivory Coast. In the city here. And then Accra in Ghana, that's the city we're flying over there. I'm focusing on these because the rest of the terrain didn't look too great anyway, so focusing on the cities made a whole lot of sense. And Togo, there's Lome, the city of Lome in Togo, that really didn't look particularly good. And then the city of Porto Novo in Benin. I think that uh, Porto Novo is the capital, but actually there's a bigger city in Benin. And it's, but it's just really close to Porto Novo, so it wasn't showing it on the map all the time. I believe it was Cotonou or something like that. But anyway, the coastal textures here are particularly bad. You can sort of see it's very blurry and indistinct. In fact, the coastline itself becomes very indistinct. Like, where exactly is the coast or the beach or anything like that. So yeah, it was rough around here in Benin. And then we were headed into Nigeria, so I had to turn away from the coast and then approach the airport in Lagos. And there's DNMM that I'm landing at. Takeoff was from GATB. And so this is the airport at Lagos. So alright, that was flights 12 through 15 of what ended up being a 25 flight series going through all the countries of the world during the Olympics. And as I get my parking spot here, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.